Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I would love to say that I'm excited about today's topic, but unfortunately, I'm sad and disappointed and a little bit frustrated. And so there's just feels like some necessary things I need to address when it comes to swimming around in the Amazon world right now. And I want to be upfront and honest with you like I am all the time. I'm going on a bit of a rant today, a little bit of not really a rant, but just like, let's, we're just having an honest, vulnerable conversation because I care about you. And I want you to know the truth about Amazon and the truth about what's happening out in the Amazon world. And I want you to know that even if it's unsexy, even if it doesn't motivate you or, you know, most people don't like Debbie Downer. Well, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer and no offense to the Debbies out there. I, I hate that there's always names attached to these things, but it is what it is. So we'll move on from there. But the the reality is that there's just so many, you know, with the great resignation and everyone's looking for online um, business opportunities all over the place, you know, after the pandemic and this pandemic ongoing where people are scared to go to work or there's different protocols or maybe they're just, you don't agree with some of the policies and whatever else and people are looking for more online, this and that regardless. There's a lot of brand new um, people interested in selling online, doing online business, entrepreneurship, owning businesses, especially in the Amazon world. There's different uh, experts or gurus or teachers or just plain old ordinary people that are making YouTube videos based on their own experiences. So I'm just putting all of those into kind of a category, not necessarily that they're all gurus, um, but there are very, there's a lot of many, there's many gurus and a lot of people out there, experts and uh, people that are selling courses and programs and agencies and all of these things. And there's reality about marketing all the time, right? We are marketed to on a regular basis every single day, probably every hour you hear TV commercials, you hear podcast ads, there's one on this podcast, you know, we're always being marketed to in some way. Um, and there's rules about marketing, even your brand on Amazon and other different things. There's rules, there's um, what they call what is it? Not a stand, standard operating procedures, but like specific rules of thumb or tips or things that make things work, right? I can't think of the word for some reason, so please forgive me on that. Um, but the reality is they don't, people want to tell you all about the results and the benefits and the transformations and the, all this stuff, which is all can be very real. Um, but there's also people out there that are just trying to make a dollar and they will literally tell you anything, truth or not, just to make a dollar. And honestly, you guys, I get hundreds of emails a day. No joke. Like a hundred emails or more every single day, hundreds, um, comments, questions, criticisms, fraud. Um, I get in my, you should see like my LinkedIn and so of Facebook and everything else of people constantly trying to be like, Hey, I saw you on YouTube and this and this and this and buy my product and promote my brand. And we want to work with you. And like, not only that, but emails like this one that I'm about to read to you because it breaks my heart. And it really is something that, you know, these things come through on a regular basis. Some of them are more dramatic than others. And some of them are just people fishing for a free course or, you know, you filter out these kind of things. But this one really just kind of broke my heart. I did change the names and some of the circumstances because I will not ever be using somebody's name. Um, in a public setting like this or a public platform. I will also not call out anybody and throw anybody under the bus. So this, I'm leaving out some information here that would be proprietary or information that's none ya, I guess. Um, but the idea here is that this is something that occurs regularly and I've had hundreds of clients that have had a similar issue. So I'm gonna read this to you. And if you have, have been down this road or have some of the similar stories, um, I feel the same for you. And there's some solutions and some actions for this, but I wanna read some of this and then we'll talk through what the truth of selling on Amazon really is now in 2022 and the keys to your success. Because a lot of people are going to be like, oh, if you just use this tool or this software or this or this or take this course from this guru, like it's like a magical wand is waved and all of a sudden your bank account has seven zeros in it, you know, um, the seven figures or whatever. 
And so I want to read this to you and then I want to kind of go over um, some of the things that are in here and the truth about what's going on. So you guys can continue making decisions for yourself, for your business, for your life, for whatever it is that you want. Because I know the truth doesn't really sell. It's unsexy, right? Um, people want to be like, oh, wow, this is, you know, I don't know. Anyway, you'll hear and then we will talk about it. Dear Kristen, I am at my wits end. I follow XYZ guru, which will not be named here and took his course and that cost thousands of dollars. It assured me that by the end, I will have my own private label item. I will start generating thousands in sales by the time I end the course. I took the course. I followed the steps. I found and developed a product. I had it made in China and imported. It cost me $12,000 to get it here and it is at FBA warehouse sitting now. I have done giveaways, Facebook ads, marketing, and everything that they taught me, and I've only sold 46 units so far in four months. Now, they want me to sign up for a PPC agency to now help me move my product forward. I am pretty sure I've spent over $20,000 by now. I saw one of your YouTube videos on how you sell products without PPC. I was told that was impossible on Amazon these days. Is this true? Forgive me for being hesitant, but after being burned by this and a few other courses I've taken, it's really hard to invest more money into something after all of this. What does your method do that others don't do? Is there any honest teachers left? The last course had no guidance. Once you invested, they just left you. They told you to work out the pro work the program and the program will work. Please tell me there is hope. Please tell me that you have solutions to help me sell this product and make my money back. Is Wholesale Bundles really the answer? Because XYZ Guru <laughs> told me that they had the answer and now I have, they have $12,000 of my, uh, I have $12,000 of products I can't sell. Can you actually help me? Signed, Joe. We'll call him Joe. Joe is not alone in these emails. I have received messages and things like this, not just asking about my course, but like, can you please help me? Are there, are there answers to this? Is this true? Like what is actually working? Because people are making money, but these other things are not the right things. There are hundreds of people out there selling courses, marketing videos, YouTube podcasts, webinars with flashy Ferraris and lavish lifestyles, the numbers, the promises. I've watched video after video and you guys know that I take webinars too, just like you do. Like you're like, oh, you know, these marketing webinars that come through, they want to sell you something. Are you just informative? Um, I've watched video after video and webinar to get more angry at the empty promises that are out there. I get, ang I get angry. I don't get mad about a whole lot of stuff, but some of it is very legit and very awesome. And I'm not discounting anybody's personal story whatsoever, but some are blowing smoke. A lot of people are blowing smoke. As a teacher of Amazon courses, as a teacher in general, as someone who desires to see people succeed, it really breaks my heart. I mean, some have real results and have helped hundreds of people. That is me. Um, but I'm a person of integrity. I don't like to talk about the other guys, right? It doesn't matter. I don't do name do drops. I don't bash people. It's not who I am or how I roll. There will be none of that here. But I don't like liars. I don't. I don't put up with lies. I do not put up with people, you know, saying things that are simply not true. So I recently attended this Amazon webinar on how to make $20,000 in your first month. I was already skeptical of that, first of all, because I've been on Amazon for nearly 20 years now. And I know that most people aren't going to make $20,000 their first month. They might spend that and they might make a maybe break even, but you're not profiting usually by that first month. Um, it takes a month just to set up your account and get everything going and get your first shipment of products in, let alone profiting that first month. So if they're selling you that, like add two to three times that time and or money in order to get there. But I watched this webinar and I watched them with their fancy cars and their big numbers and their big flashy, what I call bully marketing. It's like, you're going to miss out if you do this right now. Or what kind of person are you that would walk away from such a great opportunity? I mean, have you heard that before? I mean, it really is like you want to roll your eyes or you feel soul crushing or you feel guilt and shame because they make you feel like an idiot if you don't do it. So I was frustrated with this particular webinar and I watched them with their fancy cars and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, okay. Then I did my homework. I did some due diligence. After the webinar, I respectfully sat through it and watched their presentation, hoping that 
there was something cool to come about it and the actual business model that they were talking about, I could see working really well. There's a whole lot, no information really, not a whole lot of information about processes, how it works, time and money investments. There was just a lot of fluff and a lot of, wow, look at me, look at all my flashy everything and look at my lifestyle and don't you want this too? And of course we do. Like who doesn't want to just have unlimited bank funds and travel around the world constantly and, you know, all these fun things that everyone's talking about, right? I did my homework on this and he quit his job and now lives in Hawaii, I think. Um, Facebook and Instagram says he lives in Nebraska. I mean, a quick due diligence on people on the internet. Everybody's leaving a digital pr- footprint, you know? So do a little bit of Facebook stalking to be like, okay, where does this person actually live and what they do and all that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not judging anybody for any of that kind of stuff, but it's just facts. Like if you say you live in Hawaii, then live in Hawaii. Don't live in Nebraska. Okay. So that's already like lie number one, right? Recent family photos on said Facebook and Instagram posts. No Jag, no BMW, no Ferrari in the driveway. In fact, I saw an Acura and a Jeep, right? In this, in this Facebook. Um, Not big flashy houses in the webinar presentation. So I'm guessing all of those pictures were either rented and taken by them and just be like, hey, let me rent this Ferrari and take a picture. Did you know you could do that? You could drive a Ferrari for an hour. You could actually test drive it up to someone's front door, take a picture of yourself and drive away before anyone even notices. So, you know, those are the kinds of things. You can make almost anything up on the internet, to be honest. Like Photoshop can fix anything. Um, Testimonials, don't know if they were fake or not, but they looked an awful lot like Photoshop. And then when you try to search the names of some of the people that have left said comments, they don't even exist. Or the names that they put out there don't match the pictures, don't match. You know what I'm saying? Like, it made me super angry. Fake Facebook profiles, fake comments, Photoshopped testimonials. Like, come on, guys, let's really, you can do better. You can do better. Even if you're trying to inflate some flashy numbers that you actually have, you don't have to be that fake. Actually, more real people want you to, they want to feel more real. They want to feel like, okay, that is so far away from where I am that I don't even know if this is worth it or possible. You know, so do their business model methods work? Uh, Probably, or at some point, I'm sure they do. But why do you have to lie? Why do you have to make this stuff up and make it look better than it is? Why can't we just tell the truth? So when it comes to those things, just I'm not asking you to be a Debbie Downer or be always skeptical of every single thing. But just literally in five minutes, I realized that the people that were giving me this presentation and wanting me to spend thousands of dollars on their course that was going to make me millions, a quick five minute Facebook search and YouTube search and Instagram search showed me that this is not the truth of these people's lives. And so that made me frustrated. There are a lot of people saying different things. Just do your homework. How do you know who you can trust? Look, I, I know you guys. I'm not, I'm not for everybody. I got an email from a lady that she told me she loves my training and my teaching, but she hates my high-pitched voice. And could I make transcripts so she doesn't have to hear me talk? That's literally, these are emails that I get. I've been turned down for speaking engagements because my real numbers weren't big enough for people. Oh, you don't sell 10 million on Amazon a month? Okay, you have to go. Or they're not flashy enough to sell. I mean, I've been told in order to get people to buy, I have to paint a picture of massive success and fast, quick, easy numbers. I was even told by like a coach that I have to stop telling people that Amazon isn't a get rich quick business model that it's going to, t- it, and they said, don't talk about how hard work and new skills. Don't talk about those things. I worked with a marketing coach that literally told me to make stuff up in order to sell things. Are you kidding me? Make stuff up. It doesn't matter. Like no one cares. They just want, you know, they want to understand that there's there's a hope and a prospect for them. And so they just lay their money down. This is what's going on out there. Have you guys, any of you guys experienced this? As a teacher, I don't spend as much time um, consuming a lot of these courses and a lot of these webinars and all this stuff because I'm making honest, helpful content for you guys. So I don't have a lot of time to look at this stuff, but this webinar specifically stuck out so much because I was offended and mad. And no, did I reach out to them and call them out on their lies? No, I don't have any time for that. It just made me really sad and upset that people all over are being 
um, misled by a lot of these things. And then the people that, that take their money or sell them things, like leave them in the dust. Um, it's just what's going on. And you know, you're not gonna, it's not going on for me. It's not going on for me. I started at a stay, as a stay at home mom with a hundred dollars with some thrifted books to sell on Amazon. That's not a sexy start. <laughs> after Even after grossing a million dollars a year for over five years, I still don't have a Benz in the driveway of my mansion. <laughs> you know, it, the truth is no one's going to tell you that this is hard. No one's going to tell you that business is hard. No one's going to tell you that it takes several years to build something comfortable and sustainable. No one's going to tell you that you're not going to spend a lot of time or money up front learning and practicing. You know why? Because that stuff doesn't sell, right? That's not going to motivate you. If I look at you right now and say, you know what? Selling on Amazon it can be very difficult at times. First thing you're probably going to think is like, oh, maybe I should check into something else. I don't want hard and difficult. But guess what? Any successful business is going to be hard and difficult. Anything that you start for the first time, you're not going to know what you're doing. You're going to have a lot of upfront learning and money and practicing and failing and making mistakes to keep going. That's how we get good at everything, right? We practice, we learn, we fall on our face, we make mistakes. We're like, oh, we, we can't do it that way. We have to do it another way. And so if someone's always telling you, well, this is going to be hard, then you're not going to want to do it. So that's what people tell me, right? That doesn't sell. You have to tell people, it's awesome. It's amazing. It's sunshines and rainbows and you're going to make millions next week. Well, despite what you might think, I'm actually not here to sell you courses. My life's purpose is really to lead people to success. I love people. And as much as there, I mean, yeah, there's good people and bad people and weird people and ugly people. I don't know. I don't want to say these words and labels, but I'm just a people person. I love to see people succeed. I like to see people reach their potential and to change their own lives and be proud of their their accomplishments and move forward and have a happy, peaceful life that they deserve. And does that come? That's going to come with some education and learning and planning and coaching and mentorship and leadership. I'm here to guide you if you want your life to change. So if you're following people listening to stories, watching webinars, learning from things. Ask yourself that. Does this person actually care about my success? Does it matter? Have you ever had a teacher that just taught and they didn't care and they didn't care about your grade and they, they were just like, I'm just here for the paycheck. Like I have to spit out and regurgitate this information so that you can like learn it and learning it is on you and I don't care. I'm just paid to get up here and teach the material. They don't care if you pass or fail. They just grade your papers according to their standards and move on. I think we've all had teachers, but we've all had that teacher once in our lives, that teacher, that aunt, that counselor, that mentor, that coach, somebody out there that actually cared. And they spent extra time and extra money or extra everything teaching you, guiding you, training you, tutoring you. Um, when you had questions, they went over above and beyond to give you the answers you need because they really, really wanted you to have that breakthrough moment, to learn the material, to grow as a person, to um, accomplish that goal, to feel have some self-confidence and to increase their knowledge all had that teacher that just literally went the extra mile and you felt like, wow, this person really actually cares about me. So when you're dealing with a leader, a teacher, a mentor, a boss, a friend, an aunt, a potential mate, you know, these are things that we actually think of and filter. So don't discard that when you're listening to a podcast or you're thinking about spending money on a course or a book or, um, you know, some coaching or something like that, thinking about that, interacting with them, thinking, is this something, someone that I would want that actually cares? I've, I've been down some of these roads and you know what? There is a few keys, no matter what you're doing, no matter what course you take, no matter what guru you listen to, there are only a few real keys to success at anything, whether it's Amazon or a new hobby or a sport or even as extreme as losing your mobility due to a car accident, knowing that you're going to have to work super, super hard in order to regain your the ability to walk, ability to speak, you know, things like that. There's just a couple of keys is 
persistence and consistency. But the biggest, most important thing is you have to know what you want. What is your ultimate goal here in anything? We're talking about business, yes, specifically on Amazon, the real truth about selling online and e-commerce. You have to figure out what you want most, your ultimate end goal. It's not like, okay, I want to sell more product. I want to sell more product. Why? Because you want more profit. Why do you want more profit? Because you make more money. And when you make more money, what does that get for you? What, what is the benefit of having more money for you? More options? Because money is just a tool. It's just a resource. It's just a, um, something that you use for other things. In and of itself, having a pile of it sitting around you does you no good until you use it. So what do you want to use it for? What is your ultimate goal and desire? Why are you doing this? Why are you here? Why are you not working at Starbucks? I always joke about Starbucks because, first of all, I don't drink Starbucks. I'm not against them in any sort of way. I'm just like a basic Dunkin' Donuts coffee kind of person. I like my coffee black I, I with the stevia packet in it and that's it. Um, so I'm not a super coffee guru. I have a couple of cups a day. That's it. And they're like, and I definitely don't want to spend $10 on a foo-foo coffee. So that's fine if people do. No big deal. But my joke when I get really burned out on uh, and e-commerce, <laughs> my job, I just want to be like, I'm going to work at Starbucks. Because in my mind, working at Starbucks is easy compared to what I do. That's why I joke about having this like fantasy of escape occasionally. Like, I'm going to work at Starbucks. And my husband's like, yeah, you'd be running the place and taking it over within a couple of weeks. And then they would probably fire you because you're just a barista. <laughs> so no, you're not working at Starbucks. Try again. But it's just kind of my joke of phrase of like what I use when I when things get hard and I want to just like throw in the towel. Um, but that's really the thing is like, what is it that you really want? Because maybe working at Starbucks gives you peace and comfort and um, not as much responsibility and you just go in and do your job and punch out and come home and that is worth it to you, then if that's what you really want. What is that ultimate goal? Figure out what you want most and be consistent and persistent in pursuing it. And I call this, you're in a perfect world. Everybody has like their ultimate goal, their BHAG, you know, big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, and, but I call it, you're in a perfect world. What is your IAPW? You're in a perfect world. Now we know there's no such thing as a perfect world, but this is like fantasy land, right? So you can create it. Um, and I recently referenced, recently, and maybe it was a hundred episodes ago, but um, an episode number 173 through 176 is like a four-part series of the In a Perfect World. This is also in my book, Dream Big Step Small. So if you don't have a copy of that, go to the Mommy Income website and look at the products and services and you can order yourself a copy there. You can also listen to it on Audible. You can also get it on Amazon. If you order it directly from me, I will put a message in there and send you a little couple extra goodies, um, Mommy Income swag or whatever. But you can learn about the in a perfect world and exactly how to build your perfect world um, scenario. That's your number one ultimate goal. What is it that you want out of life in general, out of your business, out of anything? You can build in a perfect world. But I'm not going to go over that here because it's it's a whole episode in and of itself. So go listen to episodes number 173 through like 176. Um, it was around December 2020, I think, um, when I did these episodes. I mean, it's been a while, but I want you to go back and listen to that as if you haven't, or if you're new here and this is like your first episode or you never haven't heard me talk about that. It's really important foundationally to understand what I'm talking about, that ultimate goal, what you want still fits into here. So that's an opportunity for you to binge those and go back and kind of build your in a perfect world. Guess what? It's going to take work for you to do that. You're going to have to carve out like an hour or so to answer the questions and download the workbook and follow it and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't, it's not a lot, but it's really going to give you some insight into what is your, what do you want? What is your ultimate goal? What is it that you want to do? Why are you working on Amazon to begin with? Maybe it's your side hustle because you're just trying to make a little extra money to go on that huge vacation that you want, or you're saving a little bit of money because you want to take some time off, or I don't know what it is for you. Maybe you really just are, this is your only job and you're just trying to get it enough to pay off your house or debt or put your kids through college. Whatever your why is, whatever you want, your ultimate goal you need to know that. 
So if you don't know how to do that, or you haven't done that, or it's been a while since you've done that and you haven't really evaluated, it's time to take the time to do that. So go to the episode 173 through 176, it's like a four-part series, but if you only listen to um, the 173, that's still fine too, because you're going to get that whole in a perfect world, how you create that, what the questions are you should answer to kind of get to that ultimate uh, in a perfect world kind of scenario. But once you have what it is that you want, your ultimate goal, your ultimate, whether it's a destination or a feeling or a thing or a financial status or whatever it is that you're working for, you know, you have that. So think of now your GPS, right? You've got somewhere you'd like to go, something you want most, your goal, you're in a perfect world. You enter the destination and now you set your what I call your, your mental, your digital, I guess, you know, GPS system for your goal. Uh, you've got a map to follow now, right? So like you're putting it in your Waze app and you're like, okay, I'm putting, typing in my destination. I want, I don't know, a million dollars in the bank account, or I want to quit my nine to five, or I want $10,000 for a Hawaiian vacation, whatever that is your goal. Now you've got a map to be able to get there. Okay. I know where I'm going. Now I've got to figure out how, what are the steps? What are the directions in order to get there. But then you also get distracted, right? So you see a billboard on, you know, you're driving around, you see a billboard that's like, hey, you know, stop over here. Hi, look at me. We have a great attraction. You just mile down the road. So you get off the freeway and you follow that rabbit trail because that just sounds like a really fun opportunity. And how dare I miss out on that? Because you just have to see what this thing's all about, right? Maybe that is a better destination than you thought of before and you want to go in that direction. Now you might be hanging in there for a while and your GPS keeps spinning and like trying to recalculate, right? Because you're, you're off of your path. Uh, well, you finally get back on the right road, but now you're behind on your journey because this happens again and again. You get distracted by something else. You're over here. You're over there. You, you taking a detour and you completely forgot maybe where you were going in the first place. Maybe you forgot you're in a perfect world. Maybe you've been so caught in the weeds that you forgot why you started doing this in the first place or starting to feel like maybe it isn't worth it. You know, sometimes these little detours that we take can be a lifetime, can last a lifetime. When the time that you could have spent on your journey to your specific destination with a specific plan and end in mind, that time off the beaten path could have been spent at the destination, going toward closer to the destination. So every little billboard, every little webinar, every little guru, every little other video that you're watching that's not leading to the direct in a perfect world that you want to go to is a distraction and a detour. And will you still get to your destination? Yeah, you can get back on the route that you were on and you took a detour and it took you off and around, but you're, you can, it just takes longer and it takes, it's harder. Sometimes on those detours, there's traffic backups and there's, you know, slower traffic or two lane roads instead of an 80 mile an hour freeway. Yeah, I said 80. No one's speed limit is ever 80. Um, I'm not super fast driver. I don't like to drive at all, but that's just, anyway. The important thing to grasp here is that most of the distractions are designed to keep you off the path that you're on. They're keeping you from doing the necessary work to arrive at your intended destination. Just let me be real with you. I don't care if you sell on Amazon or not. I don't care if you decide that e-commerce isn't for you. I care about you as a person as a business owner, as a friend. With or without Amazon, when I started Mommy Income nearly eight years ago, it was to help people succeed. Your success is my success. Your success fuels my fire to keep moving, to keep creating these podcasts and these videos and these courses and these checklists and all the things. All you need to know in the beginning is what you want. Where do you want to be? If you can define where you want to go and you are consistent and persistent in that journey, you will arrive. You will. 
even if there's detours, we all get detours we didn't ask for. You know, somebody gets sick and has to do, you know, six weeks in the hospital or a surgery or this or an accident or just some random things outside of our control. We've had some what I call tumbleweeds around here. Now, it probably has nothing to do with a real tumbleweed. And matter of fact, I don't even know if I've ever seen a real tumbleweed. But I just call it like like when it rains and pours, right? Like um, our we had a power outage issue that then ruined some things in the house. And then, you know, we have to decide insurance claims or just replace them. Expensive appliances and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And then, you know, while that's happening, someone else is having a health problem. And like, good, I get it. Life will get in, a, in the way. But don't miss this part. If you can define where you want to go and you consistently and persistently keep on that journey, you will arrive. I will never tell you the journey will be easy. I will definitely never tell you it will be a straight line without any curves or roadblocks or problems. I will never tell you there won't be self-imposed as well as external detours and roadblocks and, you know, things like that. I'm not going to tell you it's fast and easy either. I really wish. I mean, let's just be honest. I wish things were fast and easy. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? Sometimes it's such a relief when you get something that actually is fast and easy. And you're like, oh my gosh, it's like revolutionary. What I can tell you is that it's going to be worth the work. If you know what you want, and you're headed in that direction and you get there, it will be worth the work. I can tell you if you never give up and never quit, even when it's hard, you'll reach your goals. The thing is, what stands in our way most is our own thinking that thinks it's going to, it takes too long. I'm not seeing the results I want the, as fast as I want them. No matter how slow, no matter how many setbacks. You are taking consistent steps towards what you want. You will get there. You'll get closer every time. No matter how slow. No matter how many setbacks. I know it's not always sexy to be honest. The big fancy cars, the mansions, the huge numbers, the make 20 grand your first month sounds more appealing than hard work and setbacks and consistency, doesn't it? But if you see anyone anyone who has success at anything, that's exactly how they got there. They worked really hard. They spent money, they spent time, they made sacrifices, they gave up things, they had hard days, they had failures, sometimes in the thousands of dollars, failures. But the result you see, the end result that you see from someone was a result of their consistent efforts over time. You know, rec recently I also saw like, you know, we all, we were all enamored by these before and after pictures, right? If you see somebody who's made a change in their life or successful, like I started here and now I have this kind of thing or their Amazon numbers or, you know, I think of things like weight loss or, you know, health goals that people have. And what you, all you see in a snapshot is here's a person who was really heavy at this point, And here's a person who is not They're th same person, you know, those two, two things. A lot of people add dates. A lot of people add that. But what you don't see is the everyday consistency that that person had to make those choices that person had to make every single day, multiple times a day. And struggle through hard days and ups and downs. You didn't see that week in the middle where they plateaued for, or not week, months in the middle of their journey where they were losing 200 pounds or whatever it was. You didn't see that three-month period where this, they still made the consistent changes and never saw the result in that moment. Who wouldn't want to give up if you've been working your butt off for three months for something and then you, you're not seeing the results? You have to trust the process. So anytime you see success stories, anytime you see that, that are legitimate <laughs> success stories, not some of the fake stuff I was talking about earlier, you know, any, any successful person that you see, they, they never gave up. They had bad days. They wanted to quit many times. They had hard days. They had long hours and failed products. They started and stopped many times, but in the end, they kept moving forward to what they wanted. So here 
is really the question for you. The real truth about selling on Amazon doesn't have anything to do with Amazon. It doesn't have anything to do with software programs that you use or PPC campaigns or even the product that you're trying to sell. The real truth is are you consistent and persistent at pursuing what you want? Because selling online or getting a job at Starbucks or staying at your nine to five, whatever you're consistent and persistent at, you will reach goals in those areas. Those are the results that you will see. And it's just the tool. What is the, the thing that you want most? And what is the best way to get there? Not the fastest and easiest way, the best way to get the results. What is it that you want? What is it that you're so desperately in your heart desire that you are willing to work extra hours for? Or you're, the, you're willing to sacrifice certain things for? What do you want that you're willing to stay up late or get up early and sacrifice time in order to pursue, to pursue it, to achieve it? Because if you don't want something bad enough, that result is not strong enough for you, you won't have the success because you won't have the drive. And even on the bad days, you've got to have that mental gameplay that we talked about. Like when I joke about being like, I'm going to work at Starbucks. Then I look at that and say, what do I want most? I want time freedom because time is the only thing you can't buy. In order to have time freedom, you need to make enough money with your time in less time. And that means that you can outsource, you can delegate, you can work for yourself, you can do all those sort of things. But now I run my business a couple days a week with a generous six-figure salary, but I didn't start that way. I was willing to work 80 hours a week in the beginning so that I could work two days, 10 years from then. What's it worth to you in the end? What are you willing to do now to see the result later? People like, remember Michael Jordan, who was according, and most people think he's the goat of, you know, the goat, greatest of all time. I always say the goat, people are like, what? <laughs> if you've never heard that, I mean, most people have. Um, but like Michael Jordan was like the goat of basketball for many years. Maybe now it's like Kobe or LeBron or, you know, somebody else. But the reality is like what they said about him, what he said about himself in interviews, biographies, all these different things. Like he was the first one there and the last one to leave. He took care of his body and ate the right things and did the right things and worked out the right way and practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced to be the best. You don't, you aren't born the best. Even people with raw natural talent can, maybe they have to work a little less hard because they have raw natural talent, but they still have to work hard. They still have to put in the time, put in the effort, put in the consistency, give up certain things. Because you can have it all eventually. You just can't have it all at once in the beginning. So nobody started the way that you see them. Any what I call glamour shots, not like the ones from like the 90s where, you know, you took pictures and stuff. <laughs> Y'all should leave a comment if you know what glamour shots are. Um, but the reality is, is that not these like highlight reels that we see on Instagram and on Facebook and all the stuff about everybody's like major success, but like, show me the middle, show me the yucky middle part where you're exhausted and passing out from dehydration or, you know, these points where, you know, we're hitting our head against the wall because our product didn't turn out the way we wanted to, or something got messed up all those bad days. But like, what's worth it to you in the end? Because I want to leave you with this. No matter who you listen to, no matter what information you consume, it won't work unless you do. It won't work unless you take action. No plan. I don't care if somebody laid out for you like a whole year plan. And if you, you know, these are the steps that you need to take. And if you take this from January 1st to December 31st, this will be your result. Even if that happens. If you don't follow the steps, if you don't take the action and pursue and persist past the hard parts and be consistent even when you don't see the results in the moment, you aren't going to get the result that was promised. You have to take action. 
So what do you want most? Because no matter what guru you're listening to or program you want to follow or any of that stuff, I'm not saying none of it works. A lot of it does work. But in order for it to work for you, you have to align it with what you want most. And is this the best way to get what you want most? If you're not sure what that is, if you're not even sure how to create your inner perfect world or what you really want, I'm really good at helping people figure this stuff out. I'm a business strategist. I see strategies everywhere. I have a lot of experience with that. So if you really aren't sure where you want to go or how you want to get there or what you want your result to be, I have some coaching programs available for you. You can set up a plan in order to follow. I can give you the 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 plan from your in a perfect world to the end of that GPS, you know. So if you're interested in that, schedule a session today mommyincome.com forward slash coaching and see what what whether it's one session or many um, what program might be right for you whether it's a course or whether it's just working with me one-on-one because I don't care if it's Amazon or not if you come to me and say you know what I've done this Amazon thing for like three years two years five years ten years six months and I'm just not sure it's for me but I still want to make money online guess what? I can help you with that. I can really help you with that because I also know many, many other connections and people and things out there that maybe aren't selling physical product. Maybe that's not for you anymore or it was for you and now you've changed your mind or you have other skill sets. You can make money online doing just about anything and they're not scams and they're not, you know, some of them are, (laughs) but there are really legitimate ways to do that. It doesn't have to be through Amazon, although there's probably 25 different ways to make money with Amazon. I think most people don't know what those ways are. Either way, if that's not for you, I respect that. Like not everything is for everyone. You've tried things for a while, you give it your all and realize like, I just don't like this. I don't, I don't enjoy it or it's sucking the life out of me. And there are certain things, strategies and purposes we can put in plans we can put in place and processes to lighten the load because that might be the problem. But the real problem might be, I just don't like this. It's just a means to an end. It's just a way to get more money and I don't enjoy it. Um, There's ways we can get you to the place of you enjoying it or enjoying something else and work using your top skills to do make money in other ways. Reality is whatever it is, consistent consistency and being persistent in what you want. No one else is going to chase your dreams for you. Newsflash. (laughs) They're your dreams, your, your goals and your desires. And no one else is going to poke you and be like, hey, you still chasing that dream? How's it going? What steps did you take today to get closer to your in a perfect world? <laughs> um, you know, I'm one of those people that will ask people awkward, uncomfortable questions like that. You know why? Because I actually care. You know, recently I met, <laughs> I met a person in a hotel bar. Um, when I was doing a workshop and we connected, um, I actually just said something kind of in passing because um, they were a Chiefs fan and I saw their stuff and it was football season. I was like, yeah, go Chiefs, whatever. And we ended up starting this conversation that lasted three or more hours of literally just getting to know each other. And one of the reasons was because this person was sharing their journey with me, um, how and how they lost like almost 200 pounds. And I asked some really poignant questions. Not like, oh, well, what program did you follow and all this stuff? Like, I don't know that in order to make that kind of a transformation, it's not just diet and exercise. And if I just walk three miles a day or 10 miles a day and only eat salad, I will eventually drop weight. Because most people that get to that level, I mean, I believe this person was over like 400 pounds at one point. Um, There's definitely some mental health issues or, um, shall I say, like emotional baggage and things that got us to that place. So I asked those questions. Like, I don't care what you ate for the last two years to lose that. I don't care what kind of diet and exercise routine that you did. I want to know what is the mental and emotional work that you had to do to literally shed the amount of an entire person. And most people don't ask perfect strangers those questions, but that's what I care about. Because after meeting this person for just an hour or so, I was like, wow, what a fascinating human being and what a fascinating story. And what, you know, how much work that had to be emotional, physical, spiritual, all the things. And I asked the questions that I was curious about because why not? The worst they could say is bug off. Like I'm not answering you or none ya, <laughs> none ya business. 
um, I asked this question that turned into this hour, several hours of conversation because I really wanted to know more about what kind of work did it really take to you to emotionally um, shed that kind of weight. And that turned into another really fascinating story, um, something I didn't expect, but it was really awesome. And so all that to really just say that in order to get closer to where you want to go, there's all kinds of work that's going to need to be done. And it doesn't work unless you take the action and do the work. And you will be so thankful and it will be so worth it for you if you actually do that. So be willing to ask yourself and answer the hard questions, the why questions. Like if you ask somebody why like five times in a row, you kind of sound like a what, like a four-year-old, a three-year-old, an eight-year-old. I don't know at what age they start doing that. I can't remember, but why? Why do you do that? Why? Oh, why do we want to eat our vegetables? Why do I have to eat broccoli? Well, you don't have to eat broccoli, but it's really good for you. It has all these different vitamins. Well, why do we need vitamins? Because vitamins make our body work. Well, why do our body needs to work? Because if we don't, then we get sick and we get, you know, aren't able to do the things we want to do. Well, what happens then? Well, then you sit on the couch and you're probably lonely and bored and depressed. And then that's not good for your mental health. And then, you know, why, why, why? You know, there's almost always an answer to get to the bottom of. So have your little four-year-old question with yourself. Why? Why do you want to do that? Why do you want to do that? Why do you need that? Why do you want this? There's no right or wrong and there's no judgments. Don't judge your answers. Just answer them honestly. It's okay to be like, I want to have money so I can quit my nine to five job because I don't like my boss because it makes me feel stressed every day. And then stress gives me physical ailments like anxiety and um, intestinal digestive issues. And then I don't feel good. And then I'm not motivated. And then I want to do anything. And then I could die young because I've got all these diseases, all these different things. That can just be your answer. I want to be more comfortable in life. So I need more money. <laughs> I mean, that can be an okay answer, but answer it for you. And then figure out what is going to be the best path, not the easiest or fastest path, the best path, the most enjoyable path for me to get from where I am right now to that in a perfect world, to that ultimate goal, to that ultimate feeling or destination of desire. So think about that. Don't forget episode 180, 173 if you want to go back and listen to In a Perfect World or you can get it in the book. Again, Dream Big, Step Small, uh, available everywhere and uh, about the coaching. If you want some coaching, if you just need someone to chat with about like, I have no idea where I'm going, what I want, what I do, I will ask you the hard questions. <laughs> but you're welcome because those are the questions that really are life-changing for people. No one has the nothing says I care about you more than people asking the deeper questions. I mean, I'm not really a surfacey talk kind of person, like chit chat. I will literally cut to the chase and get to like the deeper stuff of it. So <laughs> be careful what you wish for. If we have a conversation, I'm going to ask hard things um, because I actually care. Um, so mommyincome.com slash coaching or find all of our stuff on mommy income. Uh, I know you guys could be anywhere else listening to any other thing. I know these things are hard sometimes, these conversations. Um, they sound a little... I don't know, negative or depressing or this and that, but it's reality. It's like, let's do this. Let's do it together. You're not going to be alone in it, um, but you have to really admit to yourself, what is it that you want? What is it that you need? And how, how you're going to get there. And there's always help available. Thank you guys for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. Please leave a review. Let me know, even a thumbs up, a five star. Uh, send us your comments, admin at mommyincome.com. And I will see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.